Knowledge is Power is also simple when it comes to gameplay. Each player votes on a door with a specific theme, and inside you're asked one question. The person to answer the fastest wins that round and gets the high score. Provided they answer correctly and within the time limit, every player is awarded points no matter how fast they answer. As the game progresses, the questions get harder, and players are given items to use against their friends. These items range from ice balls that freeze over answers and force players to break the ice, to goo balls that splat over your phone screen and need to be wiped off in order to see the answer. At one stage, you get both of these attacks in one object and you can freeze your friend and splat them with goo at the same time. There's also one good buff that comes and goes throughout the game and that is double points. You need to bet on who you think will get the answer right, and if you do, the entire team gets double whatever they earn that round. Midway through the game, you will come across a mini game that needs you to either sort through a list of things and place them in their correct category, or link the two words together. An example of this was sorting songs between either Beyonce or Rihanna, and other game modes had us linking objects to either Game of Thrones or Harry Potter. These mini games are awesome, and we just wish we had more of them throughout the game. You come across them twice around and sadly they're over before they really begin. We did enjoy the sheer number of questions on offer. Every round we played offered a series of different questions ranging from video games to physics to food and drink. It was awesome to be challenged with new topics even if we had no idea what they were. But it all comes together thanks to the PlayLink feature that lets up to six people join in on the game from their smartphone, no matter the make or operating system. The game is easy to play and understand which opens it up for those who have never even played PS4 before. Knowledge is Power makes for a terrific party game, bringing the board game to the TV, and we love that. It scores 7 out of 10. And here they are! Wonderful! Video games have had their fair share of iconic weapons in history. Without them, we would not have anything with which to defend ourselves when the zombies attack or the darkness comes to steal our hearts. The nice thing about these weapons is that we seldom need any training to master them. We just pick them up and go wild. It's an ancient blade that killed the tyrant Xerxes. A weapon of justice. Some of these weapons have been around much longer than others, so it got us thinking. What are the most iconic weapons in gaming? Well, here they are. Number 10, the portal gun. While the first weapon on our list is not technically a harmful device, it is able to inflict some sort of pain thanks to its ability to open up portals under a turret and then connect that portal to another portal 90 stories high and send the little machine to its death. Everyone knows the portal gun, and if they don't, they at least know what it does. Yes, those orange and blue holes in the wall, it's a portal from the portal gun. Number 9, the Mega Buster. The Mega Man series has a couple of really cool weapons. Zero's sword is awesome, but it does not beat the Mega Buster that has been around since the original Mega Man released back in 1987. We've killed quite a number of robots with that powerful gun attached to his arm. And let us not forget when Capcom released the ability to hold it down and charge it. Let's not lie to ourselves here. We all didn't want to let go of that button in hopes of getting infinite power. Number 8, The Hidden Blade. Assassin's Creed and The Hidden Blade are one and the same thing, and we could not imagine a game without it. Not really. Many entries in the series start without you having access to one, and it makes us question if it's even an Assassin's Creed game. There, it's finished. Huh? What's finished? The blade. I managed to decode that parchment of yours. It showed me exactly what to do. This useful blade pops out from your wrist as you stab your enemies from the shadows and bring down the Templar threat. It even doubles up as a melee weapon. Not as effective as an axe, but hey, at least it helps. Number 7, the crowbar. Gordon Freeman would be nothing without his handy crowbar as those darn headcrabs are all over the show in Half-Life. We all know that ammo is pretty scarce in the game, so we have to rely on this stick of steel to fight off the enemies. The crowbar is basically a reliable backup weapon for all situations, and it does the job. I wonder if you could even speedrun the game with just the crowbar. Number 6. The Keyblade How do you even create a weapon in a Disney game without it being violent? 
you create a giant key that is the only thing that can kill the minions born from the darkness in your heart, known as the Heartless. The Keyblade is known for its iconic presence in the Kingdom Hearts series. It comes in various skins like the Ultima Blade, a Lion King themed one, and much more, but in the end it has one purpose, to kill the Heartless. Number 5. Hair Now I know what you're thinking. How on earth does hair fight? Well, you clearly have not met Bayonetta, a fierce and fabulous heroine who kicks Angel butt. You know, I try to avoid doing this in my Sunday best. Bayonetta has a few iconic weapons like her rocket launcher boots and her 9mm pistol high heels, but it's her hair that makes her awesome. Her hair makes up her entire outfit, and it even takes the form of devilish characters who are summoned to kill things. I'd hate to see what her split ends are like. Number 4. The Disco Ball Ratchet and Clank have a load of awesome weapons, so it's hard to nail down just what we thought was the best, and it has to be none other than the Disco Ball. Sorry Rhino 4, better luck next time! The Disco Ball basically makes everyone dance. Simple as that. You toss it at a group of enemies and they suddenly break out into a dance number. You can then shoot them dead while they dance away. Pretty sad life, but at least they went out in style. Number 3. The BFG The BFG has been found in a few games, mainly id Software titles, and we always look out for them. They're basically the most OP weapons in the game and can even kill you if you're not careful when shooting it. The BFG stands for a few things like Big Fragging Gun, Bioforce gun, and some even preconceived ones like Big Gun. Whatever it's called, it destroys stuff, and there's nothing better than shooting it at a demon and watching it splat. Number 2. The Blades of Chaos. Imagine having chains seared to your arms. Sounds pretty deep, right? The Blades of Chaos. Forged in the foulest depths of Hades. Well, nothing is too much for Kratos as he wields those blades pretty well, if you ask us. Forged in the darkest depths of the underworld by Ares himself, the blades are imbued with fire and are razor sharp. They burn things and cut things as Kratos flings them into the air and at enemies. I wonder if they'll make a return in the upcoming God of War game. Number 1. The Master Sword Every Zelda game has the Master Sword included. Be it that the game revolves around the actual weapon, or you could just find it somewhere and use it unrelated to the story. It has become a staple in the series, everyone knows it, and every new Zelda game comes with the excitement of finding it. The idea behind the sword is that it chooses its wielder, and of course, there is always Link. The sword is also said to hold a spirit within the weapon called Fee, who sleeps eternally within the sword and only awakens to assist her heroic master. Some pretty epic weapons, right? What weapons in past games have you fallen in love with? Let us know in the comments.
Samsung's new flagship TV range has taken a new form. Leaving the SUHD models behind, the new QLED lineup promises to deliver new 4K HDR visuals thanks to its new tech known as Quantum Dots. These little micro dots are placed behind the TV screen and unlike traditional LED displays that emit light from directly behind the screen, the QLED sends light up from its 12 LED lights at the bottom of the display and when this hits the micro dots, they light up like magic. This allows the QLED to deliver a bright and vibrant picture with some great blacks and some extremely realistic colors. So how does this all work in gaming? Well, with HDR and 4K being the talk of the industry with everyone investing in TVs that can do this, the QLED makes for a great gaming display thanks to its support for the PS4 Pro, Xbox One X and even PC. The QLED range comes in a few models. The 65-inch Q8C model we received is the top of the range, but there is also the Q7C, Q7F and even the Q8F. Everything ending with a C is a curved display and the F TVs are flat screens. Each model also comes with a range of sizes from 55 inch to 75 inch. The 55 inch model starts at 19,999 Rand with the price going up in 10,000 Rand segments all the way up to the 65 inch Q8C model that will set you back 54,999 Rand. This is not an entry level TV at all, but it does cater for the mid range to high end buyers who are looking for a TV with tech that will last them a good couple of years. With gaming being so heavily focused on 4K and HDR these days, the QLED range will keep your hardware running at the highest possible quality until a new massive step in gaming tech comes along. The HDR on the QLED also has the lowest input lag on the market at 24 milliseconds. That is pretty impressive. The Samsung QLED range delivers a stunning piece of tech that looks great from all angles. The flat TV range can be mounted to the wall with no gap at all for a beautiful picturesque look. The magic of how the QLED works is in its one connect box, a small device that acts as the brain for the TV. Instead of having a dozen ports at the back, the one connect is the hub for all the HDMI cables, sound, internet and USBs. Everything plugs into it and one thin fiber optic cable runs up through the stand into the TV and sends all the signal to the display. It's also not limited to any frequency, as it can send HDR and 4K to the TV without any compression at all. It's impressive and creates a cleaner environment for the display and the lack of wires is a welcome one, especially for us as we have every console and set top box you can think of. The One Connect box does get a bit hot after a while, but this is expected due to the processing that takes place within it. There's a lot of content being sent to the box at once. We tested the QLED on a few consoles. We played the Nintendo Switch, PS4 Pro and Xbox One X during our time with the TV. It was mixed results, but never a disappointment. The best part of the QLED is how bright the display can get reaching 1000 nits. This peak brightness comes in handy for HDR gaming, as Assassin's Creed Origins was the perfect title to test. The QLED delivers rich and vibrant colors, and the HDR increased the color space allowing for more realistic visuals. Then we have the brightness. For those who don't know, HDR relies on bright gaming, and if a TV can reach a specific brightness, then it gets certified as an HDR TV. The QLED is probably one of the brightest TVs we have ever seen. So bright that we actually had to turn down the backlight at night to make it easier on our eyes. The same can be said for the black levels of the HDR as it allows for pure blacks on screen without the white film overlay due to the lack of backlight. When we were in caves in Assassin's Creed, the black was almost as if it was pitch black at night. This again is produced thanks to the quantum dots lighting up individually across the screen when they're needed. While the tech is amazing, it is not 100% there in terms of pure blacks delivered on screen. If the image was made up of a lot of black areas, the underlit LED lights create a small glow on the display that is just not as great as the OLED range. The 12 LEDs at the bottom of the TV shoot up light so that when they hit the quantum dots, they let off a vertical glow that continues up to the top of the TV. This is the glow that can be seen when looking at black images. OLED displays use individual pixels that light up to create a perfectly black image, as the pixels just do not light up unless they need to. The QLED is not there yet, but we are talking about a TV that is a fraction of the cost of OLEDs, and the black levels are impressive considering this is an LED TV. The quantum dots do deliver a much better black and light experience over standard LEDs, almost a leap and jump beyond. Every game we played looked great, and the difference between this and our old LED 4K display was huge. Everything was crisper, cleaner, and the picture quality had to be seen to be believed. Even showing it on camera does not do it justice. The feature we want to touch on is the Steam Link. This chip is built into every QLED on the market and lets you stream your PC games at 4K 60 frames per second across a local network connection. We tested this out and it was great. No PC nearby, just a LAN cable connected to both. The results speak for themselves. 
4K gaming without the need to plug anything in. You just launch the app, grab a controller and play. Visuals are great, games run like a dream and there was seldom any lag that affected the game. The Samsung QLED has all the potential to be the perfect gaming TV. Its PC support is great due to its Steam Link chip and its 4K HDR features complement the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. Samsung clearly designed this with gamers in mind. And if you ask us, it's about time. We highly recommend the QLED range for anyone looking for a future-proof TV that has all the features for a decent price. We give the Samsung Q8C a 9 out of 10. So that is it for the first season of Glitch. We want to say an absolutely huge thank you to everyone for supporting us. And of course, a massive thank you to our sponsors for coming on board and helping us get this off the ground. For this episode particularly, we need to thank Hans from Vamos for loaning us his Xbox One X Project Scorpio to film this episode. And of course, we will be back in February 2018 with a whole brand new lineup with great competitions and so much more. In the meantime, subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Hi, I'm Jonathan Lautre, and you're watching Glitched. Hi, I'm Craig, and you're watching Glitched. Hi, I'm Daenerys Targaryen, and you're watching Glitched. Hi, my name is Cameron Scott, and you're watching Glitched. My name's Darren, and you're watching Glitched. Hi, my name is Roxy from Bunny Bites Cosplay, and you're watching Glitched. Hi, I'm Ilna, and you're watching Glitched. I'm Raymond Berta, and you're watching Glitched. Hi, I'm Nectarios, and you're watching Glitched. Hi, it's TK's GMP, and you're watching Glitch. Hey guys, I'm Anthrax, and you're watching Glitched. Hey guys, I'm Matthew Kanaya. And I'm Cody Pike. And you're watching, watching Glitch. We are PlayStation, and you're watching Glitch.